Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Johannes Rousseau. I'm the Executive Chairman of Damstra Holdings Limited, and it's a pleasure uh, to welcome you to our annual general meeting. Firstly, I'd like to introduce my fellow directors, our Chief Executive Officer, Christian Damstra, um, and non-executive directors, Morgan Hurwitz, Sarah Lamela, uh, Andrew Fairchild. Also present at today's meeting is our Company Secretary, Carly Hodges, and Chief Financial Officer, Chris Skoltz, and Jason Perry, our audit partner from PwC. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank those present for taking the time to attend today's meeting. Your support and interest in company affairs are appreciated by the board. Before commencing the meeting, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of various lands on which each of us joined the meeting from today. I pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Today's meeting is held via the Lumi platform. This allows shareholders, proxies and guests to attend the meeting virtually. All attendees can watch the live webcast of the meeting. In addition, shareholders and proxies have the ability to ask questions and submit votes. I will note there is a slight 20 to 30 second delay between me presenting to you today and also receiving the audio link. So I ask that you please be patient if there are any slight pauses throughout the meeting. Online attendees can submit questions regarding resolutions to be discussed today at any time. To ask a question, select the message tab at the top of the Lumi platform. At the top of the tab, there's a section for you to type your question. Once you've finished typing, please hit the arrow symbol to send. Please note that while you can submit questions from now on, I will not address them until the relevant time in the meeting. Please also note that your questions may be moderated uh, just for practical purposes, or if we receive multiple questions uh, on one topic, we may amalgamate those questions. For those shareholders who wish to ask a verbal question on audio questions facility is available during this meeting. To use this service, please pause the broadcast on the Lumi platform and click on the link under asking audio questions. A new page will open where you'll be prompted to enter your name and topic of the questions you before being connected. You'll be able to listen to the meeting on this page while waiting to ask your question but you will not be able to see the presentation, so please note. You'll only be able to ask your question when the meeting is considered, considering the resolu resolution relevant to your question. And to avoid lengthy wait or missing out on the presentation, we recommend you, you ask your question via text. If you prefer to ask your question verbally, we re recommend only clicking on the link to ask an audio question when we begin discussing the re relevant resolution. If you have any issues using the system, please return to the Lumi platform. Finally, due to time constraints, you may not get to all of your questions. If this happens, we'll answer them in due course via email or posting uh, responses uh, on our website. Voting on all resolutions today will be conducted by way of a poll. In order to provide you with enough time to vote, I'll will shortly open voting for all resolutions. At that time, if you're eligible to vote at this meeting, a new voting tab will appear. Selecting this tab will bring up the resolutions and present you with voting options. To cast your vote, simply select one of the options. There's no need to hit a submit or enter button as the vote is automatically recorded. You do, however, have the ability to change your vote up until the time I declare voting closed. When each resolution is put to the meeting, the proxy votes that have been cast on resolution and the way in which other usable proxy votes given to the chair of the meeting being myself will be cast, these will be displayed on the screen. I now declare voting on all items of business. The voting tab will soon appear. Please just submit your votes at any time, but I'll also give you warning before I move to close the voting. The company secretary has just informed me that we have a quorum to present. Therefore, I formally declare this annual general meeting of Damstra Holdings Limited open. Today's chairman, uh, we review our results for 2021, update you on re recent business performance and continue to show the evolution of our product suite 
under the strategic direction of our enterprise protection platform. Our CEO, Kristen Damster, will cover these in more detail in his CEO presentation. Damster is a leader in enterprise protection software, but I'd also like to highlight our core purpose, which is to connect and protect your world. As this positioning transcends how we work and engage with our clients and develop our products. In this context, we use the words Enterprise Protection Platform, or EPP for short, which integrates an extensive range of modules and projects that allow organisations to migrate and reduce unforeseen business risks around people, workplaces, assets and information. The rollout of EPP has been well received by our clients, both existing and new, enables us to continue to build deeper client relationships and showcase, showcase the full breadth of Damstra capabilities. Before I move on to the FY21 results in our future plans, uh, myself uh, being one of the largest uh, shareholders, I do share deeply our disappointment in recent share price performance, along with all investors. We have approximately 12,000 investors, so I know how they all feel personally. Damstra, despite achieving record revenue for the year of 27.4 million, the market appears to have lost short-term confidence in the company. Myself personally, but also the board, acknowledge there have been issues outside of our control, such as the impact of COVID-19, but also within our control, such as a client-specific activity, as we have previously disclosed to the market, which have contributed to current investor sentiment. We don't shy away from these uh, issues. The first related to a contractual dispute with a client acquired through the Vault Intelligent acquisition. The second is the scoping reduction of service from a global mining client, Newmont, as they internalise their hardware and site access requirements. Both were extremely disappointing and adversely impacted our near-term organic growth outlook, resulting in adjustments to our FY22 guidance. However, the board and the executive team consider the underlying business with more than 700 clients remains in excellent shape, and while recent client issues will not be dismissed as isolated commercial issues, they cannot become all-encompassing for the company. Putting these issues uh, to one side, FY21 has actually been a transformational year for Damstra. We've strategically repositioned our product under the EPP banner while just delivering strong revenue and EBITDA performance. We're also pleased at how successfully Vault is integrated into the Damstra ecosystem following its acquisition and significantly outperforming target operational synergies. Moving specifically to FY21 performance, despite the impact of COVID-19, in FY21, the group delivered significant revenue growth across its global business as we increased market penetration, customer usage, and pleasingly adoption of more of our technology. Revenue increased 40% to 27.4 million, with 87% of our total revenue now annually recurring, while cash receipts uh, increased by 52% to a record 31.7 million. The group has also recorded strong performance across its key operational metrics with growth in user numbers and total clients. The group added 157 clients to a total of 724 globally across 20 countries around the world and ended with 737,000 paying users, up from 423,000 in the prior year. Another pleasing aspect of our business was uh, operating leverage, so I got gross margin expansion 10.4 point, 10 points to 79%. EBITDA was maintained at 6.6 .6 million on the prior year, reflecting a robust EBITDA margin of 24.3%. And, and synergies uh, from the previous loss-making loss business. Damstra continues to make significant investments in innovation and product development, expanding its global footprint and securing strategic assets in new geographies and adjacent technologies, which together aim to accelerate future growth. 
The group invested $11 million in R&D in FY20, which includes capital costs, uh, up from 34% from the previous year. This was a significant increase as Damster took the opportunity to accelerate in investments in a number of new and exciting product extensions, which will assist in further developing the company's software platform and innovation pipeline. I will also talk about some strategic highlights following some of the company's achievements during FY21. You know, we will, I will again talk about uh, the way we pivoted our product to EPP, which showcases the strength and integration capabilities of Damstra's expanded product offering. We successfully completed the Volt acquisition in October 2020, which is now fully integrated. Uh, and a real highlight was 6.2 million of annual synergies significantly outperforming the original target of $4 million. We carried out a debt financing with uh, an AUD $20 million facility with Partners for Growth, providing financial fix flexibility to fund Damster's growth ambitions. And I think the most important is we continue to develop product innovation with the launch of new and up updated modules, including Damstra safety, satellite, paperless forms and workflows. Many shareholders, uh, retail and institutions ask about acquisition strategy, and Christian will provide an outline in his presentation of some of our transactions. Great international uh, SaaS businesses are continual acquirers, as most investors can see. And it's sometimes easier to accelerate product development and innovation via acquisitions rather than building capability internally. The best international SaaS businesses strike the right balance between growing organically and accelerating growth by acquisitions. I will say as chair, uh, we have yet to strike that right balance in terms of the organic growth component, but we still consider the right acquisitions have the strong strategic rationale. And from a product perspective, critically, we're delighted with what we have achieved through our acquisitions. For example, the acquisition of, of Vault enabled the group to to accelerate product innovation in the safety area and to expand the overall, overall offering to include solar and mobility offering. The technology has been fully integrated ahead of plan with the only disappointing aspect being the client contractual issue previously mentioned, which tempered an expected acceleration in the growth from solar. The, the recent acquisition of TIX which we completed uh, in October uh, 2021, neatly complements Damstra's platform capability, providing on-site safety, security and compliance capabilities for staff, contractors and visitors, while also adding functionality in areas such as permit to work and mobile applications. We continue to scale up in North America, our largest market in terms of opportunity, and pursue a wide range of client opportunities, which are of a much larger scale than in Australia and New Zealand. Also, Damstra's channel partner strategy continues to evolve as a long-term growth lever, and we see this as a future driver of a success, whereas effort to date hasn't been fully rewarded. But two of our main focuses for FY22 will be North America and our partnership strategy. Product and technology, I'll continue to talk about because we are a technology company. We believe our EPP is globally competitive and is the core of who we are at Damstra. We continue to implement new product releases across the platform with product innovation remaining a key differentiator. The EPP enables clients to harness the power of the four largest investment areas in our organisation that carry the largest investment risk, ensuring that people, that people are prepared Places are safe, assets are connected, and information is accessible. Strategically, the current and prospective clients have responded extremely favourably to the launch, recognising how the group's product suites have evolved to not only in work individually, but also critically how they can orchestrate seamlessly into a fully unified offering. We believe large clients now have great confidence the group can deploy the EPP at an enterprise level, rather than just being seen as a single point solution. The solo product continues to roll out strongly in health, aged care and the disability support sectors. Solar satellite capability now has been deployed 
on mobiles and wearables in remote areas without 3G or 4G telecommunications coverage. This extension to work on satellite allows solo anywhere globally, providing complete coverage for transport, logistics, remote healthcare, where we presently have a number of trials underway. Moving to FY22 and importantly, uh, people in our organisation. As Christian will highlight in his presentation, revenue uh, for the first quarter FY22 on an unaudited basis was $6.2 million, with annual recurring unaudited revenue 87.3%, cash receipts were unaudited uh, $7.7 million, and the number of paying users grew to 746,000. Pleasingly, unaudited revenue for October uh, was 2.5 million, uh, which is obviously higher than the average for the first three months of this year. Uh, that number takes total unaudited revenue to the end of October to $8.7 million. Today, we further upgraded the FY22 revenue guidance, which we previously outlined in the quarterly activities report and Appendix 4C of October 28, 2021. Our new FY22 guidance is now set at 30 to $34 million. That's 30 to $34 million. This guidance now reflects minimal contribution from Newmont and the UK business for the remainder of FY22. And at the lower end of guidance range, assumes minimal new client acquisitions for the remainder of the financial year. Further to the quarterly activities report, I note that the client continues to operate today on two new Newmont sites in the United States. While this grant, another da guidance downgrade, uh, and we are disappointed by this, this guidance reflects a, re a rigorous review by the board and the executives and fully reflects the implications of past client issues as I've mentioned earlier. But it is important to highlight in our new guidance that FY22 revenue is expected to grow between 10 and 24%. And if I excluded Newmont entirely, the underlying revenue growth would be expected to be 21 to 37%. So I do reinforce that point. The other important factor uh, is as we grow, uh, uh, we focus a lot of executive development and renewal of executives, and that will continue to be a key area for the board in FY22. To that extent, the board engaged Egon Zender during the year to assist with development of key roles in the company. In addition, in addition, following feedback from some shareholders on executive remuneration, we will aim to improve disclosure and aspects of our remuneration plans to better align with shareholders' expectations, but importantly, uh, considering the competitive market for global technology roles and the need to attract and retain executive talent. As part of the board's continual review of the executive team, and as previously discussed, Sam Marciano will become Chief Commercial Officer reporting to Christian. He'll have the responsibility of Australian New Zealand business development, product commercialisation and accelerating partnerships and specifically in construction and facilities management. David Moylan, former CEO of Vault, will leave Damstra at the end of this calendar year. Today, we have also announced the appointment of Andrew Ford as Chief Financial Officer, commencing in February 2022, and he'll be based in Melbourne. Andrew has spent the majority of his 20-year career uh, in CFO and senior finance roles most recently as CFO Finance Director for InfraBuild Limited, uh, GF, uh, GFG Alliance. Prior to this, uh, he was CFO of the ASX listed company, the Godfrey's Group. Andrew has also held finance positions with CleanAway, Skilled, Bluescope, and before that was with the professional services firm Deloitte. And Andrew also has a, a commerce degree from the University of Melbourne. The appointment of Andrew is a positive for Damstra ahead of our next growth phase. We feel that Andrew's leadership attributes and experience will enhance our executive team. I'm looking forward to working closely with Andrew as we execute uh, our growth plans. I will also acknowledge the contribution of Chris Skoltz, uh, our present CFO, who's on the call today. Um, and uh, I've known Chris for 10 years and uh, acknowledge 
uh, and thank him for the contribution for, for the business before we were IPO'd and helping us become a listed entity on the ASX. Thank you, Chris. I would also like to thank the Damster Board and all the executive team and all staff for their drive and ambition to create a truly global business during FY22. And I will say many of our employees are shareholders and are watching and virtually today. And we appreciated the invaluable contribution they all made to our company. Our staff work across seven different countries around the world and our values are driven by the mantra of connect and protect your world. And this is, this is the basis for the work environment that is empowering and meaningful to all of us, and in particular myself and Christian. Despite the, re the recent challenges, which you know, I fully acknowledge, and as you see in my speech, I've uh, spoken in some detail about, our business does uh, have scale from which to grow in our key markets, and I look forward to reporting on further, further progress in the months ahead. I'll now pass on to the CEO, CEO uh, Christian Damstra, to present the company's activities in FY22 uh, and also an update on our plans for, for the remainder of this financial year. Thank you, Christian. Hey, thank you, Johannes. Appreciate it. Uh, if we can go through to uh, slide four, thank you. Thanks, everyone, once again for joining today and uh, taking the opportunity to attend the uh, the AGM uh, for Damstra. We do appreciate uh, the support. As I go through the uh, the last year's financial metrics and uh, go through a bit of the uh, overview of where the company is and where we're going, um, and then at the end of that, we'll, of course, open up to some questions. So on this first slide here, just covering off $27.4 million of revenue uh, in last year. Uh, financial year with $31.7 million of cash receipts being a record, 79% gross margin and $6.6 .6 million in pro forma EBITDA. 24% um, uh, pro forma EBITDA margin, slightly down on the pro previous year, and 34% in, uh, increase in total R&D spend. 724 clients uh, versus 279 in June of 2020, and 737,000 uh, users uh, at the end of that uh, financial year. Next slide, please. Financial year 21 saw a continuation of growth across key metrics. We saw increasing cash receipts going from 20.8 to 31.7 from financial year 20Q4 through to Q4 FY21. That's a 52% increase, uh, which was uh, really a record uh, result for us. And of course, accelerating growth in users in the thousands, now sitting at 737,000 at the end of FY21. Next slide, please. We had a year of significant achievements. From a growth perspective, we had new customer wins. We ended the year, as I said, with 724 clients. That's an annual increase of 157 clients. Our global user numbers stood at 737,000, an annual increase of 74%. 87% recurring revenue, the product being utilised in over 20 countries, and we exceeded 90,000 users, users in the construction industry alone. That was an absolute record and an amazing result for us in construction. Definitely built off the back of the construction boom on the eastern uh, coast of Australia. The enterprise protection platform continues to evolve, and it's reflecting the breadth and the depth of the integrated nature of our expanded product offering from the acquisitions and the good work that our development team is doing internally to grow that platform. We're seeing increased uh, product momentum with that R&D expenditure of 34% uh, R&D spend compared to FY20. Paperless form users are now exceeding 15,000, reflecting not only the rapid growth of our paperless platform, but also the needs of our clients and our potential clients to go digital and get away from those old fashioned methods. New products launched. We had our Danstra Safety, our satellite, integrated paperless forms, of course, Solo, just to name a few, and the increase of our wearable device range, allowing more customers with more devices to use our product on a daily basis. Of course, we appointed Sarah Lamala to our board as a non-executive director with an extremely strong background from Twitter, Google, and of course, presently a net of Whisper as well. We're pleased to have Sarah as part of the board. Our North American Advisory Board, established and notified to the market some time ago is continuing to proceed well and is giving us good guidance in that marketplace, opening doors and helping us to take that next step 
in the North American market. Of course, we refinanced our debt, as mentioned previously, $20 million debt facility with partners for growth. We've increased our North American presence. We're continuing to invest as we see that as a major growth opportunity for Danstra and continue to support that region. The American resources and the regional FTE is planned to exceed 30 in FY22, already sitting at 17 as we sit here today. Financially, we had record Q4 cash receipts of 10 million and 32 in Q4, and of course, 32 million for the entire financial year, both records for Danstra Technology. Gross margin of 79%, EBITDA margin of 24%. We completed the Vault acquisition in October of 20. It's now fully integrated and aligned with 6.2 million of annual synergies versus the original $4 million target. Our partner network continues to grow. We continue to develop the tools for our network to grow even more. And this includes AWS, Vedantic's recognition, and of course, the US Security Executive Council accreditation. If we could have the next slide, please. And the next one. So moving forward to FY22, where we're sitting here today. So as Jan mentioned in his speech, we've exceeded $2.5 million of revenue in October, slightly higher than our average monthly run rate in the prior three months, giving us $8.7 million of year-to-date revenue. Of that, we're actually sitting at 90.4% ARR annual recurring revenue. 27.5 million is the ARR number with a 77% gross margin and $2.7 million of cash receipts in October of uh, 21 alone. $10.4 million year-to-date cash receipts, and we've exceeded 870,000 users, still seeing increasing construction, mining, and many other sectors that we're operating in already, which is fantastic to see things returning back to pre-COVID numbers. Of course, we're operating, uh, on the next slide, we're operating now in 20 countries, uh, 808 clients, 870,000 licenses. We're still operating 13 offices, circa 220 employees, and roughly 100 R&D staff. So we really do have that global network and we're continuing to grow that out. Next slide, please. On this slide here, we're showing a bit of the story of Danstra so far. Of course, our roots go all the way back to 2002. But most importantly, when we took that company private in 2016, you can see the accelerated growth timeline from there through to where we are today. We've highlighted a number of acquisitions through that time at the bottom of the graph, but also on the top, we've shown some of the things we've done that we really want to call out around facial recognition, entering the UK, of course, moving to AWS, and let's not forget EPP uh, in the uh, mid stages of 2020 there with uh, really bringing everything together into what we call the future state of where Dampster is, uh, is heading. If we can have the next slide, please. Some core achievements across financial 22 uh, so far. So we exceeded 95,000 users in the construction industry, continuing to climb, and we expect that to continue to rise month on month as we move forward. The construction vertical, which includes three core clients, generated $1 million of revenue in Q1, 74% growth on a PCP basis. Our trial with a new global mining client is complete. We've started contractual discussions and we've scoped out a module as service to be deployed in nine countries with a potential for 40,000 users. It's still going along extremely well and we'll keep the market updated on that at the appropriate timings. We've been rolling out our HSE solution with Amazon across all 25 logistic locations in Australia. An amazing outcome for our HSE solution. And of course, CBRE are rolling out our permit to work solution across their managed facilities in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, with other global locations to be defined. Our major clients, we have no none of our top 10 clients having contractual renewals in FY22. And of course, John Holland have signed a new five-year agreement with Damstra. The new NBN contract is moving along extremely well and is well ahead of plan. Tech Resources, a large Canadian miner, is now operational at six sites and is expanding to additional locations. We certainly see that as a land and expand opportunity and we look forward with working with that extremely important customer to get more of our platform into their uh, resource operations. Of course, major construction clients uh, are deploying our forms and workflow solutions across all of their uh, projects. Our largest construction customer is about to roll it out across every single one of their sites to do all of their paperwork, which is an amazing step forward for not only themselves, but of course, it reinforces the strength of our paperless and digital 
platform and direction. Unfortunately, we know that Newmont reduced their scope. We are presently remaining at two locations in the US, which are not material to dance your organisation anymore. State Cover is the mutual insurer for New South Wales Council. It has currently rolled out the Damster Safety Solution across 70 councils in New South Wales. We continue to grow with State Cover and work with State Cover very closely to fine tune our offering to make sure we can add more of our modules and more of our functionality in the coming periods. Of course, we can't miss our technology with EPP still, still being our strategic pivot. And on, on the next slide, uh, I'm actually, or a couple of slides from now, I'm going to show our product lexicon, which talks about all of the modules we have in our platform today and what makes up EPP so it's a little bit clearer for you to understand. Paperless forms, of course, now exceed 15,000, reflecting rapid growth of over 50% on a PCP basis. It's really moving in the right direction. New products, COVID record management. We're seeing increased COVID record management requirements from tracking vaccinations, tracking testing, and tracking all the things related to COVID, including questionnaires of where you've been and what locations you've been, including hard stops to stop people entering site if they've been to a hotspot location. That is in operational and being used by many of our customers today. And we we're able to pivot extremely fast on that. And I'm proud of the development team, the product team, and everybody involved in making that become a reality. Our satellite system backing up our solo product to allow our solo wearable watches to be used where there is no cellular signal is an extremely positive step forward for us for not only the trucking industry, but also the rail industry, emergency services, and many other areas that we're now focused on in that section. We have numerous new products in UAT with key clients that can be commercialized, including return to work, our skills matrix improvements, and of course, our data lake to take us to that next step with data analytics and predictive analytics. Strategically, we had the TIX acquisition very recently, circa 70 clients with FY21 revenue of 4.1 million. Of course, our CEO and uh, the founder of TIX, Sam Marciano, became our chief commercial officer, as mentioned by Johannes previously and announced to the market previously. We're very pleased to have Sam and his team on board. They bring a great deal of knowledge. They further increase our R&D um, ability and uh, I look forward to working with Sam moving forward to grow our ANZ business and the global business at a faster pace. Majority of Sam's consideration in Dancer stock was issued at a price of $1 per share. That shows the uh, understanding and the appreciation Sam has for this business and the support he's putting into our organization. And of course, as I mentioned, it increases our R&D bench strength. Our partners, Procore is a partnership now in operation targeting the construction industry in Australia and New Zealand. Oracle continues to move along extremely well with their Sydney Innovation Hub confirmed for a February launch. Technology One partnership now has 16 active clients. If we can go to the next slide, please. Our growth strategy remains unchanged from a perspective of we still believe that North America is a key, gro a key growth pillar and will continue to scale up the North American business as we move forward. We're, of course, chasing new verticals with facilities management and rail off the back of the TICS acquisition. We see a lot of opportunity there and our product in workflows as we continue to roll out our paperless forms, our workflow capability across major clients. We want to continue to build up the UK business, increase the product uptake in our smaller clients. Our customer success team is doing a fantastic job of working with our smaller clients, getting more modular uptake and growing those small clients to become large clients as we move forward. And of course, I mentioned data analytics. It remains an important part of our growth strategy moving forward. We want to continue to build our user numbers across all regions and increase our client penetration of every module across the Dampster EPP. And of course, partners remain an extremely important part of our strategy moving forward. And we want to continue to support those partners and make sure they have the tools they need to move forward in a positive manner. And of course, EPP remains at the center of everything we do. And we still believe that is the right direction forward. And the feedback we get from our customers is extremely positive in that uh, area. If I can have the next slide, please. Now, of course, I hear where it is pointing out that revenue is uh, growth is being driven by organic sales and, of course, M&A. I wanted to point out here on this particular graph that we've grown at 37% three-year CAGR. And, of course, it's not all been acquired um, base. 
there's actually a large chunk of organic in there shown by the dark of uh, blue at the uh, very top of the chart there. So I just wanted to call that out and show what that uh, revenue journey has looked like because it is a question we get asked uh, quite regularly. So hopefully that helps to uh, clarify where that growth has been. If we can have the next slide, please. Another question we get asked a lot about, and we're working very hard internally to get even clearer on this, and we have an aspiration to get to a point where we can show users by module and things like that. We're not quite there yet. But what we are able to show here in this bubble graph is the size of each of the different components or the core modules, if you like. And you can very clearly see that workforce management still maintains to be our largest core module, very, very uh, closely followed by access control and safety. But I'll tell you right now, with the growth we're seeing in digital forms and e-learning, they're both coming up and uh, I'd expect that bubble chart to change drastically over the next 12 to 18 months. If we can have the next slide, please. Our client growth is continuing to come from a diverse range of industries. We've seen growth just in October alone from the prior month, showing also that increase in revenue that I spoke about before. So we are seeing big turnarounds. And of course, you can still see there that construction is a uh, certainly a dominating industry uh, in that story as we stand here today. Next slide, please. On the next slide, we're just talking about M&A remaining a core growth strategy. We have acquired seven companies in the last four years from small private businesses to listed entities on the ASX. We just wanted to point out a few points around M&A and uh, what we look for in acquisition target, but particularly we're looking for product can it enhance or accelerate our EPP proposition? People, is there's, an, there's an emphasis on culture and integration fit and what talent can we bring into the organisation to help accelerate and boost the strength of our, uh, our base? And of course, traction, what products are they commercialised? Uh, can we take them to market now or do they need to be rebuilt and modified? Of course, our secondary filters, does it provide us an entry into a new market, be it geogra geographically or vertical? Does it establish a new client and cross-selling opportunity with an increased network effect? Does it accelerate the convergence of technologies that can scale internationally? And um, is there organisational capability that we're acquiring to help our overall base team uh, accelerate their goals? Of course, our ideal M&A target profile, adjacent and complementary technology, something that enhances Danstra's modules to suite and the EPP overall something that accelerates delivery of our innovation pipeline, things that brings products that can scale internationally, organisational capability, increases our organisational capability, particularly in R&D, helps to build out an international organisation or synergies that can be extracted very fast. Client lists with a market consolidation, accelerating that international growth and a cross-selling is extremely important in everything we do when we do an acquisition. Can we have the next slide, please? Of course, some things go well and some things don't. And uh, on this slide, we're talking about uh, what has gone well and some of our reflections. And I'll go more into detail on the next slide about each of the acquisitions we've done. But on this particular side, we can acquire products and modules. It's faster than the developing them ourselves. We know that and we understand that. And that's one of those reasons we do that. Each product acquisition has accelerated and helped to create the EPP proposition, which we feel is the future, and certainly our customers are telling that as well. The acquired products have fulfilled the expected client needs. Several Danstra senior leaders have come from acquired companies, which shows us that talent from the acquired companies can come into our organisation and play a significant role, and we're very pleased and proud of that occurring. Significant majority of acquired clients have been retained. And can synergies have been generally higher than have been expected? Cash synergies, sorry, have been generally higher. Integration has generally gone well. And they implemented a centralised infrastructure and global, global approach to allow us to take these products and globalise them at a much faster pace than that smaller individual company could have done on its own. Of course, when we reflect back, it's not always smooth sailing. Technical integration can be done, but for some products, it is a long process. And sometimes there's multi-year technical debt. Optimal results are achieved when acquired products strongly relate to core offerings that we already have. The talent acquired has been positive overall and organisational changes are generally required. It's always optimal when senior management possess a strong technical background of the organisation we're acquiring. And buy or build, 
we estimate it would have cost more to build the acquired products from the ground up than acquiring the organisations that we've acquired. So that's just some of the reflections on the M&A done to date. Can I have the next slide, please? I won't go through every field on this slide because it is quite a full slide, but here we've actually detailed the acquisitions we've done, the key acquisitions being Velpix, Scenario, APE Mobile, Smart Asset, Vault, and of course, most recently, Tix. We've included their base revenue in there and the strategic rationale. So if we look at when we acquired Velpix back in May of 2019, we had an e-learning platform, but it was nowhere near the level that Velpix was using at that point in time. It allowed us to accelerate the development of an integrated learning platform into workforce management and eventually take that through into EPP. It was implemented as a core offering as part of the workforce management solution. That is one of the positives. And of course, the re reflection on that, it took us a little longer than what we like to retire the Velpic brand. We wish we had have moved faster on that. If I have a look at, uh, at uh, Scenario, for example, they contributed $1.3 million of revenue uh, when we acquired them in December of 2019. It was a consolidation play. It was a small Queensland competitor. Uh, the key component uh, of expanding into Queensland with a major client was the acquisition uh, measure that we had there and the reason we wanted to acquire Scenario. We retained their key clients. Uh, there was no product addition from that. And we didn't bring any executive talent over from that acquisition. So that's one of the reflections we have there. And of course, if we look at a more recent one with Vault, uh, we acquired a mobility product that we did not have. We could have built it, but it would have taken us a lot longer and cost us a lot more. We accelerated our safety proposition to the market. We had a level of safety, but not to the level of Vault. So once again, we could have built it, it would have taken a lot longer. Key success measures, we got those $6.7 million of revenue contribution savings in the accounts in FY21 and a significant increase in users. And of course, if we reflect on the negatives, the shore plan dispute that we're all aware of, all that information's there. And of course, uh, happy for you to review that uh, and ask questions uh, as we move forward. Can we have the next slide, please? And the next slide. If we just reflect on our product and where it is today, of course, the uh, enterprise protection platform has come a long way and we've taken a lot of different modules and systems and brought them all together into one seamless platform. If we look down the left-hand column now, you can see what each of our modules are. Of course, starting with the enterprise protection platform as being the, the, the mothership, if you like, with workforce management, e-learning, solo, solo drive, access control, digital forms, safety, predictive safety analytics, insights, asset management, and intelligent workflows being the name of each of the modules down the left side there. And we've included a, a description on the right-hand side of each of those modules to give you some clarity around what EPP means and what people are using it for. Can I have the next slide, please? A couple of screenshots here showing uh, the actual EPP hub on the left-hand side. And it's as very simple as clicking on any of those items. It's all seamlessly uh, joined together as one platform. So you can see we have solo there, we have e-learning, we have safety, and of course, all the other modules are accessible from that EPP hub. Too much to put on the uh, the one screen there, but just want to show a bit of a snapshot. We can have the next screen, please. Over here, we're showing our contractor access portal where the thousands of contractor companies who have to interact with Damstra and our clients on a daily basis are able to do their online induction management, their supplier registration, their worker registration, we're able to do independent verification of every document they put in there. And of course, their time and attendance and on-site data, as well as many other things from company messaging. And of course, reminders of up and coming skill expiries all through the one seamless portal and mobile app to help those customers uh, do this in real time. Can I have the next slide, please? A couple of examples of our platform in action with time and attendance on site. We've got compliant workers are permitted to enter the site via access control hardware terminals. It's recorded via swipe card or biometric pass-through, real-time view of site attendance. You can see a page out of EPP there actually showing a physical site, locations on the site, and graphing who is on site right now, all in real time. Of course, we've bolstered that by being able to track and protect individual workers on site with our wearable technology with Solo through your mobile phone or your wearable devices enhancing worker safety and monitoring and protecting for things like fall detection, distress beacons, and of course, instant notifications if anything's changing in that work site at that time. We have the next slide, please. 
We talk a lot about digital forms and capturing and managing and organisations data in real time, enabling everyone in the field and in the office to know what is going on and make better decisions and to get more done. It's not just about taking a form and making it paperless. It's about making it smart. It's about filling it with information from the EPP around does this person have the right training? Does this person have the uh, right amount of fatigue hours to be able to do that task safely? So very important, it's a smart form, not just a digital form. And of course, mobile site management. Workers benefit from consistent information, greater collaboration and progress monitoring, reducing the cost of rework and improving safety and compliance on site. Can we have the next slide, please? And the next slide. I'll just cover very quickly, I know Jan mentioned uh, that we have updated guidance today uh, from our previous guidance there at 35.9 to 38.9. We have downgraded that to 30 million to 34 million, 10 to 24% year on year growth. If we take out Newmont, uh, obviously uh, 21 to 37% growth, which is a very solid result with an EBITDA margin of 15 to 20%. We have some assumptions on there. Jan mentioned it previously, I'll go over them once again. Nil revenue from Newmont for the remainder of FY22, nil revenue from the UK business, lower end of guidance assumes minimal new business, the TICS acquisition performs at FY21 levels, and of course, nil revenue from the New Zealand contractual dispute. We are working through those things. We have a lot of opportunities in all the regions around the world where we're working today. And as a team, we sat down, we went through all of our customers, all of our guidance, and we decided that this was the right figure to put to the market today. And uh, we want to go out there and, of course, uh, meet and uh, hopefully exceed uh, your expectations. Can we have the next slide, please? I'd just like to say uh, once again, thank you very much for taking the time uh, and listening to us today. We do appreciate your ongoing support through uh, some of these difficult times. And I'll pass back to uh, Johannes, uh, who will uh, take the meeting back from here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thanks, Christian. Just opening up to uh, any uh, questions uh, people may have. If you haven't submitted a question, uh, uh, please use the chat box and please tap on the messaging tab on your screen and type your question in the chat box uh, now. I'll just wait for a little while to see if there's any questions from uh, any shareholders. Carly, are there any uh, questions from shareholders at this stage? No questions, Jan. Okay, if there's uh, no questions, uh, it brings me to the formal part of the meeting. Uh, there are 12 items of business, including uh, 10 resolutions, which have been listed in the notice of meeting. The notice of meeting was sent out to shareholders in, in October. Um, and I'll take it as read. Before we consider the items of business, there are a number of procedural matters I wish to draw your attention. While our visitors and guests are most welcome here today, we do have a number online. This is a shareholders meeting only, uh, and only shareholders, their attorneys, proxies and authorised company representatives are entitled to ask questions and vote at this meeting. I am holding undirected proxies in my capacity as chairman, and it is my intention to vote all such proxies in favour of all resolutions. Any directed proxies that are not voted at the meeting will be automatically default to me as chairman of the meeting, and I'm required to vote these proxies as directed. The final results of the polls will be available later today on the AXX. The first item on the agenda is receive and consider the annual report of the company together with the declarations by directors and the director's report, the remuneration report, and the auditor's report for the year ended 30 June 2021. This item does not require a resolution to be put to the meeting, but does provide an opportunity for shareholders to ask questions or make comment on company matters. The company's auditor, Jason Perry, is available to address questions in relation to the conduct of the audit or the content of the audit report. I remind you the directors and management are responsible for the preparation and presentation of the financial report and the auditor's 
Auditor's responsibility is to conduct an audit and give an independent opinion of the financial report taken as a whole and not on individual elements of the financial report. Accordingly, questions on specific aspects of the financial statement should be, it will be addressed by a director or management. To assist in running the meeting, please direct any questions to myself in the first instance, so I can either answer the question or direct questions to one of the other directors, management or Jason as appropriate. If you have a question on this item and have not yet submitted it using the chat box, please tap on the messaging tap on your screen and type your question in the chat box now. Carly, are there any questions? No questions. The first resolution on the agenda today is a non-binding advisory vote for the adoption of the remuneration report for the financial year 30 June 2021. Uh, the remuneration report is contained in the annual report, which is available on the com company's website. It includes details of the company policy and remuneration of directors and executives, a discussion on the relationship between that policy and company performance, and details of performance conditions associated with the remuneration of the Chief Executive Officer and other executives. As stated in the notice of meeting, this is advisory and a non-binding resolution, although the Board will take discussion on this resolution into account when it is considering the future remuneration arrangements of the company. Details of the, this resolution are set out in the notice of meeting. The Board recommends that shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. If you have a question on this item and have not yet submitted it using the chat box, please tap on the messaging tab on your screen. Carly, are there any questions? No questions. Resolution today on the agenda is the re-election uh, of non-executive director Simon Yenkin. Details of Simon's qualifications and experience are set out in the notice of meeting and also in the company's annual report. The board, other than Simon, recommends that shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. If you have any question on this item, and have not yet submitted it using the chat box, please tap the messaging tab on your screen. Are there any questions, Carly? No questions. Resolution three on the agenda seeks shareholder approval to ratify the issue and allotment of eight warrants to PFG nominees under ASX listing rule 7.1. Details of this resolution are set out in the notice of meeting. The board recommends that shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. If you have a question on this item and have not yet submitted it using the chat box, please tap on the messaging tab on your screen. No questions, Carly, I presume? No questions. Resolution 4 on the agenda seeks shareholder approval to ratify the issue and allotment of 12 million completion shares under ASX listing rule 7.1. Details of this resolution are set out in the notice of meeting. The board recommends that shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. Uh, once again, if you have a question on this item uh, and have not yet submitted one, uh, please tap on the messaging tab on your screen. No questions, Carly? No questions. Resolution 5 is a special resolution. 
this resolution seeks shareholder approval to allow the company to issue an additional 10% of the company's issued capital by way of a placement over a 12 month period from the date of this meeting. Details of this resolution are set out in the notice of meeting. The board recommends that the shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. If you have a question on this item, once again, and have not yet submitted it using the chat box, please tap on the messaging tab on your screen and type your question in the chat box. Carly, no questions from what I see? No questions. As resolution six to nine related to equity proposed to be issued to myself uh, and Christian and myself being executive chairman, I will hand over the meeting to Morgan Hurwitz, uh, chair of the Remuneration and Nomination Committee of Damstra. Over to you, Morgan. Thanks, Jan. So moving to resolution six, resolution six seeks shareholder approval for the issue of 48,612 zero priced options to Christian Damstra under ASX listing rule 10.14. Details of this resolution are set out in the notice of meeting. The board, other than Christian, recommends the shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. If you have any questions on this item and have not yet submitted using the chat box, please tap on the button on your screen and type your question below. Kelly, do we have any questions? No questions, Morgan. Okay. Might move forward. So moving forward to resolution number seven. Resolution seven seeks shareholder approval for the issue of 62,023 zero-priced options to Johannes Rousseau under ASX listing rule 10.14. Details of this resolution are set out in the notice of meeting. The board other than Johannes, recommend the shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. Again, if you have any questions on this item and have not yet submitted in the chat box, please press the button on your screen. Carly, do you have any questions? No questions. Okay, thank you. All right, moving to Resolution 8. Resolution 8 seeks the shareholder approval for the issue of 148,441 premium price options to Christian Damstra under ASX listing rule 10.14. Details of this resolution are set out in the notice of meeting. The board, other than Christian, recommends the shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. Again, if you have any questions on this item and have not yet submitted them using the chat box, please type on the messaging tab on your screen and type the question to the chat box now. Carly, do you have any questions coming through? No questions. Thank you. Okay, moving along to resolution nine. Resolution 9 seeks shareholder approval for the issue of 189,390 premium price options to Johannes Rousseau under ASX listing rule 10.14. Details of this resolution are set out in the notice of meeting. The board, other than Johannes, recommend the shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. If you have a question on this item, please, and have not yet submitted it using the chat box, please press the messaging button on your screen and type your question into the box. Kelly, do we have any questions coming through? No questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will now pass back to Johannes to take over the, the rest of the resolutions. Thank you. Thanks, Morgan. The final resolution on the agenda seeks shareholder approval for financial assistance to be provided by TICS in connection with the TICS acquisition. Details of this resolution are set out in the notice of meeting. The board recommends that shareholders vote in favour of this resolution. If you have any questions on this item and not yet submitted it using the chat box, please tap on the messaging tab on your screen. Now, 
No questions, Carly? No questions. Other business. The final item on the agenda today is any other business that may be legally be brought before this meeting. Are there any matters to be brought forward by shareholders? Any questions, uh, Carly? No, nothing. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, that includes our discussion on items of the business before this annual general meeting. In a few minutes, I'll close the voting system. Please ensure that you've cast uh, your vote on all resolutions. I'll now pause for about 60 seconds to allow you time to finalise those votes. So there'll be silence for approximately uh, one minute. Carly, I think that was enough time just uh, just to check again. Yes, that's one minute on the dot. I declare that voting is now closed. After the votes and the resolutions have been counted and reviewed, the results of the poll will be announced on the ASX by an ASX announcement. I now declare this annual general meeting closed. Uh, thanks for everyone who attended the meeting and your interest in the company. On behalf of the board and the executives, we look forward to your continuing support in the uh, upcoming period. Uh, have a nice day, everyone. Bye.